Since the graphics are such a fundamental part of any game, let's first examine Nestmaker's Pixel Editor. We've made it entirely possible to create all graphics for your game using the Pixel Editor alone. But it is also possible to use external tools like Photoshop, GIMP, or even Microsoft Paint to create graphics, and Nestmaker to refine them into a format that the Nest needs. For Nestmaker's default engine, different asset types require different size tile sets. If you'd like to start with a blank canvas, we have made it easy for you to choose the appropriate size. Go to the Pixel Editor menu, select New BMP, and you will see a list of options. Main, Screen, and Path Tiles refer to the different types of background tile graphics. A full tile set is generally used for special screens such as Start Screen and Win Screen. HUD area is for the text or images you will want to use in your game's heads-up display. Game objects is for game-wide objects such as your player, power-ups, or objects that may appear at any time on the screen regardless of what other graphics may be loaded. Monster tiles is for creating monster tile sets which can be changed from screen to screen. We are going to begin by creating a main tile set. You can toggle on and off guides in the menu bar at the top of the interface. There is a button for turning on a pixel grid where you can see every pixel defined. Another shows an 8x8 grid, which is most optimal for working with game objects and monsters. Another shows a 16x16 grid, which is optimal for working with background tiles. You can show these guides in any combination. We will use the 16 pixel guide since we are making a background tile set and background tiles are made up by 16x16 16 16 pixel images. You can zoom in and out of the tool by using the magnifying glass or by pressing plus and minus on your keyboard. To start creating graphics we should first define some colors in our palette which you see on the left. Right now we have not defined any palettes or palette groups so by default this will use palette 0. We will talk a little bit more about this when we get to working with palettes. You'll notice that there are four color groups of four colors. This represents the way that the Nest sees colors in four sub palettes. It is easy to change the colors in a palette by right clicking which opens up a swatch of available colors. An important thing to understand about Nest colors is that the Nest had no true palette. These colors are approximations, and you may notice that they vary slightly between emulators or when playing on original systems on different TVs. To select a new color, simply click on that color. If you've chosen the first slot in any of the subpalettes, you will notice that the first color for all of the subpalettes have changed accordingly. This is because for the Nest, the first color represents the transparent color. Each subpalette actually consists of three colors and the global transparent color. For background palettes, this will essentially be the color of your background. We've often simply used black for this so that we could use it as an outline for all of our subpalettes. However, a game like Super Mario Bros. may use the blue of the sky as the background color. For this exercise, we'll use black for the first color. I'm going to make a grassland type area, so I'll add two shades of green and a brown color to my first sub palette. Before we begin drawing on our canvas, it is important to understand how Nest graphics work. Unlike modern game engines, Nest cannot directly make use of graphic files like BMPs or PNGs. Instead, it relies on specific strings of binary data called CHR files, which denote pixel by pixel which value in the sub palette should be displayed on the screen. Those pixel values would include the subpalette used and the value 0, 1, 2, or 3, which correspond to the value used for that particular pixel. We've developed a system for our tool to read very specific BMP files and convert the value to CHRs, which the Nest can then read. The way it works is, it uses a black, red, green, blue bitmap, and when writing to the binary CHR file, black represents value 0, red represents value 1 green represents value 2, and blue represents value 3. When you are painting in Nestmaker, you are actually painting with black, red, green, and blue as seen in the top menu bar. Choose the rectangle tool, and in the top bar choose the red swatch. Then, draw a rectangle covering the first 16 by 16 tile area by dragging from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. You'll see that it appears red. Now, select the pencil tool. 
select the color green in the top menu bar, and put some random dots inside the red rectangle you've just created. You'll see they appear green. Lastly, select the line tool. Choose the color blue from the top menu and draw a few blue lines inside the red rectangle. These lines appear blue. The good news is this now conforms to the data the tool needs to create CHR data that the nest needs to see. But the bad news is it doesn't give us a very good idea of what the graphic is actually going to look like. So what we can then do is translate it through the currently selected palette by choosing Enable Palette Translation from the top menu bar. Now we can see what the graphic would look like if this particular palette was loaded at the time of displaying it. And we can also draw with the palette translation enabled. You can then see the swatch at the top has become the colors of the currently selected palette. Let's use the pencil tool and the lighter green color to get rid of those brown lines. Feel free to zoom in if it makes it easier. And there we have now created a basic grass tile for our game. In order to be able to use it, we must save it as a tile set within our current project. So in the top menu bar, select the save icon. Now you will have to navigate to the graphic assets folder and specifically to the graphics folder for this project. Here you will see a tile set called BCK CHR00. This is your first background tile set. By saving this new file over the top of that graphic, it will automatically replace the blank image with the one that you've created. Now that we've learned how to create graphics using the tool, let's look at how to import graphics from our external file and how to get them into our necessary black RGB format. Go to Load BMP File in the menu bar. Navigate to your root folder, Beta Assets, Graphics, and open the graphic called tree.bmp. This tree is already a four-colored bitmap, but unfortunately, it is not in our black, red, green, blue format that the tool demands. If you click back on the RGB mode, you'll notice it does not change to an RGB except for any values that are perfect red, green, or blue values. We can use the global color change tool to paint all light colors in a file to the correct value. We know for certain that the corner of this image should use the same green value as the grass we created in the last step. So while we're still on the red, green, blue mode, choose red or choose color 1 from the subgroup, which is the green we intend to paint, and click on any of the corner areas. Much of the image will turn red. Now click on the Enable Palette Translation again, and you'll see what the red will look like using the current palette. Sometimes it's easier to work in BRGB mode to determine what still needs to be changed. Other times, it's easier to work with palette translation enabled. There is another tool that can help, especially in palette translation mode. That is the Show Bad Pixels option. When you click on it, it will show you what pixels currently do not conform to the tool's needs. We can now easily take care of the trunk of the tree by using the global color change and the last color which will translate to brown. Now, if you check Bad Pixels again, you'll notice that the brown pixels no longer show up, as they are no longer bad pixels. And if you look at the BRGB mode, you'll see that their actual BMP color will be blue, thus denoting the last color in the subpalette, which is currently loaded as brown. But we still have a slight problem. It looks like we may want a secondary subpalette for this graphic, because we need a light color green at the top, but we don't have any more color slots for this. So let's create a new subpalette that is mostly a copy of the first, but instead of brown, it will have that yellowish green that we see in the bitmap. You'll notice that as you move to the second subpalette, the entire image is translated through this new subpalette. Don't worry, when actually creating the tile asset in later steps, you can define which subpalette is used by each tile. What's important right now is making sure that the image conforms to the BRGB format. Now, use the global color change tool to change the lightest green color. Once you have done this, there should be no more bad pixels. This image is now in a state that it can be used. However, we still have to put it in our tile set. So use the selection tool and drag from the top left corner of the image to the bottom right corner. Then hit Control C to copy it to the clipboard. You'll know it has been copied if the selection overlay disappears. Then, go to Open and navigate to your Assets folder again by going to Root, 
graphic assets, and the folder for your project's graphics. Open your first tile set again and you should see that your grass tile is still inside. Move your mouse to where you want to paste the image, the top left corner of an available tile, and press Ctrl V. Now your tree appears in your tile set. You can save this file and it will update the tile set for use in the tool. Hopefully this video has illustrated some of the features of Nestmaker's Pixel Editor, how you can use it to create graphics, how you can import graphics used in an external program, and how you can use features in the tool to conform graphics to the Nest limitations.